All right, time to answer the ultimate question. Will I ever move back to Japan? All right, I'm about to go back home to Singapore and I would like to reflect back on my experience staying in Japan for two weeks. Basically, I'm talking about my observations and answering questions like, will I ever leave Singapore for good and live in Japan? Look what I found. What the heck? I'm Japanese, but I think the Japanese are pretty weird. Observation number one, uh, the typhoon was tough. Although it didn't hit hard in Osaka and Tokyo, uh, still there are many side effects like the heat, the intense heat. Some days it exceeded 36 degrees. It's super hot, harder than Singapore. And another side effect, uh, I got a bad headache because there's a change in like air pressure so that results in headache for some people like me typhoon is really nearby and i have this terrible headache i'm trying to massage to alleviate it and every time i experience something like this like typhoon like earthquakes i feel blessed living in singapore because we we hardly have any natural disasters well i think that's my plane another thought was that Japan may not be a safe place anymore. Like, you guys all know what happened to uh, Abe san. The Abe san no ken dagi janaki, ironna honto ni jiken ga saikin okitemasu yo ne. And the problem is that Japan doesn't really have a proper system to uh, prevent these from happening. For example, like, how can someone get so close to Abe san and successfully aim a shotgun? You, you gotta be really close to him. So they didn't really have a system to prevent this from happening. And it's not just this, like for example, like people can fall off from the platform to the rail and get into accidents. Because unlike Singapore, trains, like a lot of the platforms, they don't have like a fence. So in a lot of areas, there's no system to prevent bad things from happening. By the way, the international airport, pretty empty. All right, let's go through immigration. All right, finished immigration, ready to go home. So I know a lot of you were not able to visit Japan for the past three years, and I want to let you know Japan is so different. And I noticed there are so many foreigners now in Japan everywhere Tokyo, Osaka, Fukuoka And this is a big difference like foreigners working at convenience stores like restaurants and they speak amazing Japanese But this is not really good for the Japanese because of course the foreigners in a way they're taking jobs So I, I feel like the society in Japan is kind of more leaning towards a competitive society We have to compete with foreigners now so i don't know like maybe 100 200 300 years from now it's gonna be like singapore very competitive and things are getting more expensive like for example ramen a bowl of ramen can cost like 900 yen and a standard bowl of ramen used to cost like 700 750 yen right so some things are getting more expensive it's quite sad that all the lounges are closed even starbucks and even the convenience store look at this <laughs> I noticed a lot of public restrooms in Japan don't have soap. Oh yeah, I feel very uncomfortable. I cannot wash my hand with soap after my big business. Yes, feels great to be back. 
a quick word from our sponsor for today, Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy for anyone to create a website. No knowledge of coding is required and my website for example was created within an hour. With Squarespace you can easily link social media, analyze the traffic and trends using analytics and even create members only pages. And the best thing, you can get 10% off your first website or domain. Just head over to squarespace.com slash gib and use the coupon code gib. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And another point, uh, this one's good news for many of you. Smoking used to be possible even at indoor restaurants. But now the standard is that you cannot smoke indoors. I mean, of course, this is sad news if you are a smoker, but finally Japan is like becoming like a global standard. Smoking outside only. And I thought it's amazing that the Kodawari spirit is just so amazing in Japan. So Kodawari is like a pursuit of perfection. I was shopping for this pen, right, at Tokyo Hands and it was so difficult for me to choose because there are literally like 3,000 types of pens I can choose from. And I noticed it's not just pens, you know, it's it's anything. Imagine any type of product. Okay, I'm at Yodo Baji camera right now. Look at the variety of mouse pads you can get here. I think there are like literally like 200 types. This is a shop that specializes in Sue. And I thought this was very unique to Japan. Um, I think the Japanese have kodawari. They want to have the perfect items for their needs. But one weakness of Japan is, uh, I think, user interface. Like things are not clear and some things are overly complicated. Like for example, the Japanese washlet, the Japanese toilet remote, there are like 30 buttons. And even for Japanese, I, I only know how to use like two to three. But obviously like the, the recent trend is to make it very simple. It's not only the remote for the toilet, um, MRT entrances can be very complicated as well. I remember in Tokyo, I couldn't find the entrance. It was so difficult for some reason. I can't find the elevator, no escalator. あとはこういうね、あの、座れる公園がちょっと少ないなと思いました。なんか10分とか15分ぐらいあるかなきゃ公園ないとかザラですよね。we finally found the park. And I walked for 10 minutes. I think Tokyo needs more parks, more greenery. Like I noticed uh, that train rail, right? In Singapore, below it, uh, a lot of times they will make like a park below the rail, below the bridge. But in Japan, they will make izakayas and bars below it. I know I just said we need parks, but I like that. But one thing great about Japan is that um, you have to walk a lot. あの、シンガポールにとって使わないですよ、階段。あの、もうほぼ使わない。だからなんかエスカレーターがめっちゃ混むんですよ。でもこれいいことなんですよね。日常生活を送るだけてある程度のそのカロリー消費ができるので、but oh, one thing I still don't like about Japan is the lack of automation, digitalization. Like the cashier, still a lot of human effort. All right, time to answer the ultimate question. Will I ever move back to Japan? I mean, I mean, Japan is a great country, um, but I, I'm kind of in like a love and hate relationship. Some things I very like, but some uh, <laughs> kind of difficult. But nobody knows about the future, right? Moving to Japan can happen. But at the moment, um, I'm very, very happy with my lifestyle here in Singapore. So I'm not thinking about like permanently moving back to Japan at all. Because I like my life here. Um, I like eating hawker food, spending time with my in-laws, being able to make videos I enjoy. And what I really like about Singapore is that I can be based here and travel everywhere I want to, right? Japan. Korea, Southeast Asia, Europe, India, they're all so nearby. I admit it was quite difficult, not only for me, for all of us living in Singapore during COVID because there's no domestic flights in Singapore. So everybody was kind of locked up. But now that travel is becoming the norm again, it's an amazing place to live in. And sometimes Japan is better when you are a tourist rather than a resident. And I feel like I'm saying this all the time because like <laughs> a lot of my viewers still do not believe that I truly love my life in Singapore. They're, they're like, you must be lying. You must be paid by the government 
a lot of my viewers say, but Singapore is too boring, it's too hot, it's too competitive, it's too expensive. And I understand all of your points. But I think people who lived abroad, they will know that there's, there's no utopia, right? There are pros and cons to every country. So what I kind of recommend is that um, instead of complaining, we should learn how to appreciate small things. That way you are happy whatever you are doing, wherever you are living at. Because I believe that the happiest people are always appreciating these uh, small things. For example, my friend Jimmy, every time we just take a stroll, he will stop me like every 10 seconds and will say, oh, look at that plant or look at that flower. It's so beautiful. Or, like he, he knows how to appreciate everything. And I thought if I can be like him, I'll be able to enjoy my life everywhere. Because if we can look at the world with wonders and fascination, every moment will be fun and exciting, right? Even if you think you live in boring Singapore. I still remember in, in Shinjuku, I was walking alone, right? And I suddenly felt I was so happy and I was having so much fun. Because I saw, you know, tall buildings, like people drinking at izakaya. I saw like cute shops and it got me thinking, why not we look at our everyday life like that too? Even when you're like taking the same path for work, look around, look what's around you. If you see a flower or plant, admire it. Everything is flowing, right? Nothing is static. I have a plant right in front of my computer, right? And if you don't pay attention, it's just the same old plant that's sitting in your, in your table forever. But if you look carefully, the color of the leaves might be changing. There might be baby leaves growing. So if you look carefully every day, you might spot these small differences. And these are fascinating. So I thought, I, I want to look at the world like this everywhere. Even in Singapore, even if I'm having my same routine. So that was my observation in Japan in answering your question if I will ever move back to Japan permanently.